was again. That is the gospel. And Boltman did not proclaim that gospel. It proclaimed a false gospel. And until we get back to a clear gospel in the church, we're always going to be floundering in the modern age. If you turn to Philippians chapter 1, Philippians chapter 1, It says, verse 7, even as it is meet for me to think this of you, what because I have in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers of my grace. In the defense and confirmation of the gospel. And so the church, if it's going to be effective in the modern age, has to be clear, unequivocal, unambivalent and bold in the proclamation of the true gospel. And Boltman and many, many thousands of ministers in the 1950s and 60s failed to proclaim a clear gospel. And that is why we're in a mess we're in today. Now, I want to look at God's agenda. How does God te teach us? How does God tell us how to reach the modern age? Well, if you turn to Acts chapter 7, how do we reach the modern age? Let's look at the Bible now. How do we reach the modern age, modern people? Well, if you turn to Acts chapter 7, verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on them with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Stephen was stoned to death. The gospel advances under persecution. When the church is persecuted, the gospel will move forward and advance and take ground. Secondly, the church advances with persecution. Secondly, the church advances by the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. <coughs> Acts 10, 44. While Peter spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. The Holy Spirit fell upon Peter. The church will advance through the modern age by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of God. Next, the church advances through true conversion. Acts chapter 9, verse 3. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Paul uh, was converted, and because he was converted, he had a powerful effect around him. A drug addict in your area, a prostitute, a businessman, a businesswoman, somebody in your area who comes to know Christ, and when they know him, they will be used of God to advance the cause of God. So persecution, the power of the Holy Spirit, and real conversion. Then the church advances through preaching of the word. Acts chapter 13, verse 44. The next day came almost the whole city together to hear <coughs> what? To hear the word of God. The church advances when the church preaches the word of God. There is a famine in the church today. I repeat again, there is a famine in the church today. 
because the church is not preaching the word of God. Then if you turn to Acts chapter 14, verse 23, the church will advance when she uses biblical leadership, when she has good leaders who are biblical leaders. Acts chapter 14, verse 23, and when they had ordained them elders in every church <coughs> and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they believed. <coughs> Excuse me. Elders were appointed in the church. Today, too many churches are building their leadership on a business model, and that is wrong. It is not biblical. But leaders are not managers in the world. They are spiritual. They are people who are gifted and talented by the power of the Holy Spirit to do the work that God has called them to do. They are not businessmen and women. They are called they have a call of god to leadership and when the church puts these leaders in the work that they are called to do the church will be blessed acts chapter 18 verse 11 i just want to say to you pastors out there you if you've made a leadership team from a business model start again because you've gone the wrong way Acts chapter 18, verse 11. The church also advances when there is good discipleship. Acts chapter 18, verse 11. And he entered there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Often you'll see Paul stop and teach for a couple of years. Churches that are grounded and solid in their discipleship will have a church that will advance the gospel in their community. Finally, a couple of more. The church advances by prayer. Philippians chapter 1 verse 9. This I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. The church is a praying church. It was a praying church. Colossians chapter 1 verse 3, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. And unless we're a praying church, we will not advance. We will not reach people with the gospel. Are you a praying church today? And then finally, the church advances by being gospel-centered. We looked at that before. Verse 7, even as it is meet for me to think this of you all. Philippians chapter 1, verse 7, even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both as in my bond and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, all are partakers of my grace. The defense of the gospel. A church that is clear about what it believes is a church with a clear sound for a modern age. Are you clear about preaching the gospel? We don't preach our experiences. We preach the cross. We preach Christ crucified. We preach about the Lord. So we've come to the end of the lecture. And I hope that you've been blessed today. We've looked at the Enlightenment. We looked at Rudolf Bultmann's life and thought and how he had an impact on the church in the West in the 20th century. And then we've looked at how to get back, how to change our times by some biblical principles. I didn't cover all of them. It was not exhaustive. But it gives you some idea of how we can move forward today in our modern age. The picture before you is the University of Marburg. It was the seat of great learning in the 1950s. Boltman's ideas were pounded and proclaimed from there. A decadent theology, man-centered, and it had a powerful impact upon the West. As you look at that picture, it is the picture of human reason. 
It is a picture of man-centeredness. It is a picture of what man thinks. But my friend, when you read the book of Acts, you will see a picture of God over history. And that is what you have to think about at this time. As we are confronted by the great missionary task of the church, as we go forward today and face Islam, face modern secularism, as we go forward and face all these challenges, your great need of the hour is to not look at men, is to not look at their ideas, is to not be impressed by the professors of this age, is to not be browbeaten by the intellectual elites in the universities and even in the seminaries. It is to not look at the age and to feel that the age has destroyed Christianity or that the age has pulled Christianity down to no return. No. Look up. See how great your God is. See how great he is. He is over history. He is with the church. And he will bless you. As you proclaim the gospel in this modern age. Psalm 121, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved and he that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth even forevermore. The Lord is going to end history. And it's all going to end. And the pride of man and the glory of man will fall to the ground and be shown to be nothing. But the glory of God will flow like the sea of today. Flow. The glory of God. So look up to your God. And proclaim the gospel in this modern age. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess our failure and sin today. We acknowledge the weakness of our hearts and our need of you. And Father God, we give you the praise and the glory today. Father, let us not fear men, but fear you. And let us focus on proclaiming the gospel. Because men like boatmen, they're out of fashion, but your word is always in fashion. For it is the eternal word of God. Bless us now, Father, we pray as we go and depart. Bless our, the, those who hear this message. Bless their ministries. Bless their walk with you, Father God. Father, we pray those who do not know you may know you. We have a hanker. We have a confidence in our God. May God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. God bless you.